those at the head table and everyone here. I'm uh, honored to be here, uh, particularly as Louis is launching his second book, or second substantial book, shall I say, uh, and it's on strategic marketing. And uh, we had the privilege of hearing uh, the keynote speaker talk about the importance of strategy, also giving us some historical examples of how even the former president implemented strategy. I like the example that was used about saying that if we bring Nestle and plant Nestle here, that the investments will come. And actually, if you think about it, how true that was. But Nestle is here now, and we don't have the investments. What I'm trying to say by that is not the invalidity, but actually the strategy was valid at that particular point in time, that particular strategy. And we have now a new set of problems. And we are got, we've got to, we have to get together to actually address our new set of problems. I'm going to throw a few questions rather than answers for the, to the audience to contemplate so that you will be able to probably come up with some answers for yourselves and for us in the government about maybe how we should really forge ahead. I'm talking here about strategy, political and economic strategy, and I'm also talking about how do we actually communicate this strategy. Politics by its nature basically is short term. And few leaders who have had a long term vision have succeeded. Often those who have had a short term vision, history has judged them worse. And unfortunately, most of Sri Lankan leaders have actually had short-term horizons. The conflict always is that we are basically in an election cycle and our primary aim is to retain power. So as Lee Kuan Yew said, and his well-known saying, that Sri Lankan elections are really an auction of non-existent resources. Even though that was said more than five decades ago, I think that holds true even today. And that is why we have not been able to actually emerge strongly like some of the other countries in our region. So how do we actually sell the long term to the electorate rather than just the short term is one of the big issues, I think, that politicians face. When you get into a discussion on finance and economics, often you come across the issue of what actual theories that you are propounding and what is actually in the common man's psyche. To give you an example, lots of people tend to think that ownership is more important than the return on equity. It doesn't matter if an SOE is loss-making and brings no return, or really is a negative return because the losses are funded by the taxpayer as long as we own it. That is in the psyche. And people are not looking really at returns. Often, the idea is that somehow or other the SOE is the property of the workers rather than the shareholders being the citizens of the country. So when you try to get into SOE reform, you run into all kinds of obstacles because these are the prevalent, dominant streams of thinking. Irrespective of the fact that China 
and Vietnam, even India and Bangladesh have been able to break through that kind of historical socio-economic thinking. I would still say that Sri Lanka's dominant thinking is in that space and that's something that we have to really change. Private capital is not looked at as very legitimate, somehow or other in the common psyche. Private education is not still looked as legitimate, often in the common psyche. That is why often when there are ventures that are brought forward, you know that there are all kinds of ventures that are brought forward, some good, some bad, but often the opposition is not about the institution or not really about the way in which private entrepreneurs brought the project forward, even though those are often used, but it's really some kind of an ideological battle that actually is the main reason why that opposition actually exists. What then is the government's role? The government's role definitely should be in the space of social justice. We need to make sure that those who are poor and those who are vulnerable are always protected. The government's role should be in the regulatory area, making sure that regulation works and that there is good governance. If we were to talk of the problems of the country, everybody knows them. I often have people talking to me every single day and often people come with the problems. Being a politician, I have to patiently listen to it, sometimes even pretending that I'm probably listening it for the first time when I'm actually listening it probably for the tenth time in that particular week. People rarely come up with solutions to the problem, so the problems are well known. And then everybody's expectation somehow or the other is that you will be able to have a quick fix of the problem. And as you can see, some of these problems have no quick fixers. They involve reform, and they involve basically long-term trajectories and long-term solutions. Therefore, we actually need to fix the system. We need to fix the system. And to fix the system, it's much harder to fix the system. I've heard people say that when X was president, or Y was in charge of this particular area, oh, it really, really succeeded, and there were results. X and Y have disappeared either by the bullet or by the ballot. In both those situations, everything subsequently collapsed. Often those people are looked on as heroes, but in my own analysis, they were not good for the system because they did not really fix the system. I'm fully aware that I'm talking to a group of professionals here today. We should really look at fixing the system if we want to see this country progress. Louis and also my colleague, former colleague, Yasas, who are particularly involved in strategy, I think we need your support. This country cannot be fixed by an individual. The system needs to be fixed. Politicians are not going to ultimately fix this system. I think we need to move away from looking at fixing these problems in terms of different silos. We all have to get together. We all have to get together in actually fixing this system. I thought of making these few comments because I know that if I put the problems before you, even though I don't have all the answers, that you will be able to actually come up with some solutions, and not only solutions, that you will be able to come up with a strategy also 
to market those ideas because ultimately in politics you need the people back your progressive ideas. So thank you again, Louis, for inviting me. I wish you all success, and I'm sure your new book, which I haven't still seen, will be a very useful tool, not just for students, but also practitioners like ourselves of strategy. I wish you the best. Thank you.